Hello and welcome back to Pico TV. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Pico Lineside 00 scale catenary system. Right, so let's start at the beginning with this. Many of the main lines on the British Rail network are electrified to a common standard using overhead wires to operate at 25 kV AC. The West Coast and East Coast main lines to Scotland, the main routes in East Anglia, and parts of the old Midland routes to Bedford, together with the suburban routes around Glasgow, West Yorkshire, and the West Midlands, all have the characteristic overhead mast and wires of the modern electric railway. It is worth mentioning that the catenary system is also a good basis for modelers wishing to recreate the Northeastern Corridor route in the USA. The electrified main line runs for 457 miles between Washington DC and Boston, Massachusetts. The components used on the route are not that dissimilar to those represented by our catenary system. And the scale of these products is just about right for HO scale modelers wishing to recreate the American prototypes. Until the introduction of this kit from Pico in 2016, overhead catenary was a challenge for the modeler and mostly undertaken by scratch builders. Fortunately, the Pico system has now been available on the market for some time and other model railway manufacturers have started producing locomotives with pantographs that operate and can be moved up and down. The Pico Lionside system comprises two distinct component sets, the masts and the catenary contact wires, all of which are factory assembled. To get modelers off to a good start, there is the starter pack, the LC100, which includes 12 masts plus two installation jigs. The LC115s are also sold separately. And this fully illustrated shows you how installation guide. The single mast, the LC110, are also sold separately. The contact wires and suspension links are supplied in five different lengths. We have the LC150 at 200mm in length, the LC151 at 260mm, the LC152 at 340mm, and the LC153 at 380 millimeters and for those of you who have larger layouts there's the LC154 at 500 millimeters in length. All of these different lengths enable the system to be installed around track curves of different radii. However in this film we're just going to take a single straight length of track and show you how quick and simple the system is to install. Everything else you need to know about curves, turnouts and platforms can be found in this Shows You How series guide. Right, before we start the installation there are a few tools we're going to need. A file, a soldering iron, flux and solder, a pencil, wire cutters, fine nose pliers, a ruler and a drill with a 3mm drill bit. I would also recommend a heat resistant pad or a small board of vermiculite to help attach the registration arm on a flat surface, plus a small paintbrush with some warm soapy water to wash away the flux after soldering and a small adjustable spanner to tighten up the nuts. As you can see I have laid the track, completed the ballast, weathered and painted my rails. All of this should be done before installing the masts. However, down the side which I've chosen to install the catenary, I have left the installation area free of ballast. As you can see, I am emulating the look and feel illustrated in this photo of a section of the East Coast Main Line near Colton Junction. The catenary is designed to be set at the correct height when the base of the masts are placed level with the moulded sleepers of the Pico Streamline track system. Therefore, when creating a high ballast shoulder as prototypically found in areas that use overhead electrification, I would suggest using washers to pack the height of your masts. Use a pencil to mark a hole like this. Then 
use a 3mm drill bit to drill your hole, but make sure it is vertical, otherwise your mast won't be straight. Then check the mast has a sufficient amount of thread to accommodate the nut and washer provided. Alternatively, into a blind hole they can be glued if the board thickness exceeds 25mm. Next, take the mast and lay it flat on your heatproof or vermiculite board because it's now time to add the registration arm. Note, when proceeding forward, the orientation of the registration arms alternates between each mast from left to right. Place the registration arm in the desired position. Then add a small amount of flux to the point of contact. Next, apply a small amount of solder onto the tip of the soldering iron and touch gently onto the fixing point that joins the registration arm to the mast. When the registration arm is attached successfully, insert the thread of the mast through the hole and using a 5.5mm spanner or the adjustable spanner to tighten the nut beneath ensuring the mast remains perpendicular to the track. Put the jig back on the track the other way around and locate the cutout in the end around the base of the mast you have just fitted. Using a length of conductor wire and the second jig to measure out and mark the locations of the next mast. This is aided by using the curved end of the lower wire hooked around the pip in the center of each jig to give an accurate location as shown here. The process is repeated to mark out the installation masts along the rest of the route as required. When all the masts are in place, it's time to hang the contact wire by threading the upper wire through the support regulator tabs on the top of the ties of the mast. And place the loop of the lower wire around the registration arm like this. Then bend using a pair of pliers the upper wire and fix in place. Then simply apply some flux to both the lower loop and the upper wire and touch solder into position like this. Then when you are completely satisfied remove the excess suspension wire from each connection and trim the lower horizontal tie of each mast back to the designated strut. Then all that's left to do is remove any excess flux with a paintbrush and some warm soapy water and leave to dry. Now the masts and the wires can be painted and weathered as desired. Now I finish off completing the ballasting with a teaspoon around the mast and glue in place and wait for that to dry. Next I position the concrete trunking and apply Pico's PS360 brake dust and weathering powder. After applying the brake dust I fix it in place using hairspray and again leave to dry. Then I finish off using Pico's basing glue and static grass applicator. I've added some wheels relay boxes and one of the model scene colour light signals with a track accessory SL46 which is the TPWS grid. And to finish off the wheels modern palisade fencing the SSM317 to keep trespassers off the line. And here we have it, a prototypically accurate catenary system perfect for existing models and the exciting new Acura Scale Class 92 with electronically operated pantograph. There has never been a better time to model in 004mm scale in the United Kingdom and with super high fidelity models and locomotives now available on the market it's only right to give them the correct track and overhead catenary system produced by Pico. Now before we end I wanted to mention that further developments of our catenary system are due to happen in the near future, so watch this space. So until the next time, stay safe and keep modelling.
Thank you.